you're receiving the another and when you receive the another listen he can therefore do all of the things that you'd be putting off to heaven you can have them now Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words if this message has blessed you evangelize share it with somebody else subscribe and every time that you like and subscribe or share this you're helping us get this message out to other people it wasn't an accident that we got to be in the earth today that you were born in the earth in this dispensation right it's the Holy Ghost dispensation we're not here by accident we didn't just show up one day and go hey I got a good idea we're literally picking up where others left off Reverend Kennedy e. Hagan which I spoke of a little bit earlier in his latter years he preached on faith 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 but in his latter years he started to make a lot stronger emphasis on the Holy Spirit Lester Summerall same thing where he's talking about the person of the Holy Ghost and he says this is probably the greatest and most important message of the day dr. Ed Dufresne right before he went home he had a vision of the Lord Jesus and Jesus said to him specifically people want me but they don't want the one that I sent they want me Jesus but they don't want the another that I sent which would be the Holy Ghost are you here if I'm coming after dr. Dufresne would mean I need to carry that message I'm just trying to show you that there's a narrative here a beginning where this all came from we're picking up where others have left off and when you pick up where they left off you don't go back to the beginning where they were you take where they were and you keep going say you take where they were and you keep going right yes we're picking up where Jesus left off where do you suppose Jesus left off with the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today it was his whole his whole purpose of coming was to get the Holy Ghost to be able to come into the earth are you here yes. and it's no accident that we're here it's no accident you're here I'm called for this I've been trained I've been brought up in this years and years of study say years and years, years, and years. I'm no novice in this that I didn't just come up with this one day and go hey this is what I'm gonna preach on and teach on it took years and years and being under the right people and coming to this place do you understand mm -hmm. now some are not gonna like what I'm about to say but he that has ears to hear let him hear people will quote this all the time they will say that Jesus said I will never leave you nor forsake you Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1 let brotherly love continue be not forgetful to enter entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unaware does your Bible talk about angels yes. yeah verse 5 let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have for he hath said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee now let me ask you a simple question are those letters in red no. this is not these are not the words of Jesus Jesus did not say that he will never leave you or forsake you because he did leave you right. he said I will not leave you comfortless there's a difference I won't leave you without sending another John chapter 14 verse 18 this these are these red letters yeah this is what Jesus said I will not leave you comfortless but is he gonna leave you yes, yes. did he leave you yes. yes he did we can go into Acts and I can show you that he left and then did he send in another yes. Yes. he sent the another he said I will not leave you comfortless he did leave you but he did send another and this is where people have a problem or we have a problem we see it to this very day as his people have not fully received say fully received. fully received fully received the another that Jesus sent and to fully receive him you need to know who he is you need to know that he's God and you need to know that it's his dispensation all right so they've not fully received the another that Jesus sent as God in his dispensation so our creation story so to speak or how we got here continues 
along this line why in every denomination in every group of Christians that I was in did they put everything off till heaven is that in most most people's the way they think about God well when I get to heaven it'll be good right why are they putting everything off till heaven well one day after spending much time in prayer I was going for a walk a lot of people won't like this either but an angel blew in my ear remember we just had we just read a verse about angels people being unaware of it well I was aware of it that the angel blew in my ear and when he did these words went down in me and said because that's where their Lord is why does everybody put everything off to heaven because that's where their Lord is now those words they expanded and exploded on the inside of me to all of these revelations that we're walking in today that's where their Lord is but where is your Lord in the earth you're receiving the another and when you receive the another listen he can therefore do all of the things that you'd be putting off to heaven you can have them now their Lord is in heaven but packaged in those words came all of these other things that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you can walk with him by saying words everything in now say now, now. in this dispensation is weighted towards the Holy Ghost being God in the earth and the more that you can get a hold of that the greater and stronger that you can walk with God who is the Holy Ghost in the earth today you're not putting it off till heaven you walk with him now here and now everything in this dispensation is a Holy Ghost dispensation say that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Dispensation. dispensation everything in this dispensation is weighted towards the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today first Corinthians 12 verse 11 but all these worketh that one and the self same spirit if it's being worked in the earth it's being worked by this one and the self same spirit right dividing to every man severally as he wills who wills the Holy Ghost all these things and we can read I didn't read them all but we have you know we have administrations and operations and diversities of gifts all of the things that God is doing in the earth today say all the things, all the things. they're all being worked by one say one. one one Holy Ghost are you here yes. the Holy Ghost is the only part of the Godhead in the earth today where's Jesus at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Where's the Father? In heaven. In heaven. Right, on Jesus' right? Mm -hmm. They're both there. Where's the Holy Ghost? Here. He's here. He's the only one in the earth today, and He's the one working all of these things. Let me read it again. But all these worketh that one. Get it straight in your head. Who's in the earth? The Holy Ghost. You're in the earth. Who are you walking with the Holy Ghost is he God yes, yes. is he a divine person yes. yes all these work at that one and self same spirit he's a self dividing to say every man as he wills he has a will he's in the earth it's his will that's being done in the earth I tell you a lot of people just don't like it second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit now remember that angel said to me he said that's where their Lord is mm -hmm. they're gonna wait till heaven to get what their Lord has for them mm -hmm. but our Lord is here in the earth the Holy Ghost look now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is or where the Spirit is Lord there is Liberty where is the Spirit Lord here. the Spirit is Lord in the earth if the Spirit's not Lord for you in the earth then you're limited in the liberty you can walk in if the Spirit's not Lord for you in the earth then you're limited in the liberty you can walk in is that true yes. if the Spirit is Lord for you in the earth then you're unlimited in the liberties that you can walk in mm -hmm. is this any good yes. what happens here when you start accepting and acknowledging the fact that you're in the earth with the Holy Ghost 
and it's his dispensation and everything is weighted towards him and he's the one doing everything and he's God and he's a person mm -hmm. when you get with the plan it starts to give you a, a completely different worldview say a completely different, completely different. worldview world you start looking at things completely differently don't you you have a completely different belief system it doesn't mean you stop believing the Bible it means the way you interpret the Bible the way you believe things is different than just putting it off when you get to heaven and the reason I mentioned the angel there because the same angel said to me later on in the same context of the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today you walk with him by saying words right use the words I worship you Holy Ghost five words that up till that point I had not found in Christianity are you here five words that seem to be completely foreign foreign to most people five words I worship you Holy Ghost use the words I worship you Holy Ghost those words are sacred words for the Holy Ghost worshiper what's different about the Holy Ghost worshiper than other people the Holy Ghost worshiper worships the Holy Ghost and he would use the words I worship you Holy Ghost they become sacred words to him are you here yes. the words I worship you Holy Ghost are found on the lips of the Holy Ghost worshiper and they're not found on the lips of other people does this make sense I'm not trying to pick on anybody I'm just I'm just declaring facts here so when that angel said use the words I worship you Holy Ghost he was giving us a key to unlocking certain things that won't be unlocked any other way I've heard others preach the person not and this this isn't everyone believe me <laughs> that looking deeply I have found other people preach that the Holy Ghost is a person and not a force I appreciated them saying it because the Holy Ghost is a person not a force you understand it's not a power some people even talk about fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost as a person I've heard people preach the Holy Ghost is the only part of the Godhead in the earth today believe me that's very rare but I've heard it preached by other people mm -hmm. that the Holy Ghost is the only part of the Godhead active in the earth today I've even heard one person say only one so far that Jesus isn't here Jesus isn't here. have I ever said that yeah. I think I've probably said it this morning or this evening I heard one person say that the Holy Ghost is not a dove but he's a person that descended like a dove mm -hmm. I was I was flabbergasted when I heard that because I've been preaching this for years over and over and over and over again are you here yeah. and so when I heard somebody else saying these things I was like hey 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 I'm not as much of a heretic as I thought I was or as you thought I was because it's the scripture so I've been preaching all of these things for years yet not once have I heard anyone ever say I worship you Holy Ghost or use those five words now I believe God told me that through yes through a person of an angel yeah but but it was still God telling me that use the words I worship you Holy Ghost because and I've preached on this before whole messages on it it's a diversity of operations meaning it does something to you that other things won't do but not once have I heard people use the word or preach on using the words I worship you Holy Ghost this will change and when it happens things are gonna start changing quickly you'll see but we're building an army of Holy Ghost worshipers you're one of them people that understand that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and because he's God you should worship him and by worshiping him you're using the words I worship you Holy Ghost use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I'm not being disobedient to the heavenly vision I use and preach the words I worship you Holy Ghost I use them and I'm telling you when you use the words and when I've used the words it begins to transform you it transforms your worldview in a way that nothing else can it transforms your belief system from being off into heaven somewhere to walking with the living God who's God in the earth today mm -hmm. use the words I worship you Holy Ghost mm -hmm. 
when you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost you enter into a space you enter into a room I've called it you enter into a room where you change your thinking changes follow me here if I go I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost your God near today I worship you Holy Ghost think about what's happening to me I'm becoming different I'm becoming a Holy Ghost worshiper something I wasn't before which enables God to do and change in me things that weren't there before mm -hmm. you enter a room where things change you change and your entire world view changes do people like that generally not they don't like having to think about things differently but the longer you stay in that room the more you change and frankly you can get addicted to it you're in there long enough to where things start let you like the way they look now and, and you look back at the other things and you go well that was all wrong Psalms 34 7 we're talking about the room of Holy Ghost worship so what what do you mean by the room of Holy Ghost worship well I mean it's actually a room it's a place in the spirit that you enter into by doing what using those sacred words I'll call them that sacred words that we were given to use well just I'll just ask you that if God sent an angel if God sent an angel and told you to use these words what would you call those words would you call them sacred words yes. Would you call words that came from God I'm not I'm not saying they're the word I'm not saying they're the written word of God but they came from God and he said use these words he gave them to use they're sacred words they're words that are found on the lips of Holy Ghost worshipers that are not found on the lips of anyone else when you use those words you enter into a relationship you enter into a room where things happen and things change where God can do things for you that he won't do for other people are you feeling how this is this doing something to your inner man yeah. it's changing you if you go here it will literally change you Psalms 34 verse 7 the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that what mm -hmm. fear him and delivers them so here's an angel of the Lord that encamps round about a certain group of people right mm -hmm. did it say everybody the angel of the Lord encamps around about everybody and delivers them no. no it says he he encamps around about a certain group of people that are doing something and delivers them he does something for them that he's not doing for somebody else mm -hmm. you understand well here that word fear we know that could also be and has been interpreted in other places in the Bible as worship the angel of the Lord encamps around about those that worship him and who's the Lord the Holy, Ghost. Holy Ghost he encamps around those that worship the Holy Ghost and delivers them mm -hmm. are you here so we have angels according to the scripture that will do things for Holy Ghost worshipers or people that worship him the Holy Ghost that they won't do for anyone else so as I'm worshiping the Holy Ghost and how do you do it you get in by yourself I guess you wouldn't have to be by yourself but people probably think you're crazy if you're not by yourself you go in your room you sit in a chair and you you go I worship you Holy Ghost you literally use the, you would use the words he gave you to use wouldn't you I worship you Holy Ghost 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 people go oh, I don't like that <laughs> well you don't know then you're not gonna know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. but as you do that I'm feeling better right now after doing it after, as you begin to do that he begins to look at you right and then you have the angels that according to Psalms 34 verse 7 will encamp around about you where do you suppose they are they're in that room do the angels worship God yes. they do it night and day they're in that room when you get into the room probably the first thing they're gonna do is look at you and go well what are you doing in here mm -hmm. but as I'm in that room an angel said to me he said I don't have anything to do with people who don't worship God mm -hmm. and I was like okay <laughs> God you got to give me some scripture for that here it is 
he doesn't do anything for people meaning his hands are folded but when you start to use the words that's why he said use the words I worship you Holy Ghost because then that enables him to do things for you are you here yes. it opens up a whole new world of benefits for you Ooh, yeah anyway so while I was in that room an angel said to me I don't have anything to do with those who don't worship God or worship the Holy Ghost or use the words I worship you Holy Ghost which is how you get in the room if you don't use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I won't have anything to do with you now you go wow well, what's that's just mean that's abrasive I can't could this angel do anything for those who didn't worship God no he was limited I'm severely limited it doesn't mean I wouldn't want to do things for you but I speak from this room of Holy Ghost worship you understand mm -hmm. and if you don't use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I'm severely limited in the amount of things that I can do for you so Holy Ghost worshipers are people who use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I don't mean just speaking in tongues I've got news for you there are plenty of people that speak in tongues that would never utter the words I worship you Holy Ghost out their mouth Do you understand so that's not what we're talking about we're talking about people that specifically use the words I worship you Holy Ghost and specifically worship the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today those people I can minister to those people I can do something for so these words distinguish the Holy Ghost worshiper from other people like I've said it sounds very simple the difference between a Holy Ghost worshiper and everybody else is that the Holy Ghost worshiper worships the Holy Ghost they would use words very similar to I worship the Holy Ghost not only does that set you apart just just by those words those sacred words but it also marks you as someone that those angels can come and do things for and minister to according to your Bible mm -hmm. using those words I worship you Holy Ghost those sacred words you all right with me saying that yeah. sometimes kind of sounds funny when I say it but you know that's what I mean using those words it begins to rewire you it begins to rewrite the way you think about stuff mm -hmm. because now I worship you Holy Ghost and every time I say it some new wires get fixed remember he's the one that Jesus sent into the earth to teach us all things yeah. right yes. and as we're worshiping him he begins teaching you things he get, begins to rewire you because most people are not wired to believe the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and we walk with him by saying our words mm -hmm. Are you getting this yes. so as you're doing that he begins to rewire you and he rewires and rewrites literally everything to a completely new world view a completely new belief system and I'm hey I've been around for a while I know I look you know like I'm really young but I have literally been around for a while and I've seen all I've, I've, I know all of the other doctrine I've studied the doctrine but until I began worshiping the Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost and getting into that room and staying there for extended periods of time I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost my whole my doctrine and my my, uh, my worldview and my belief system began began to change mm -hmm. to where I now walk with a living God in the earth a new belief system the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today you walk with him by saying words now is that a belief system yes. is that a new belief system mm -hmm. you say that I, I bet I bet most people who did know their Bible they would agree with that they would go yeah yeah the Holy Ghost he is God in the earth today yeah and if they knew anything about how to walk with God by saying words right they would also go down that road they would say oh sure sure yeah but it is a new belief system and it's all encompassing mm -hmm. because he becomes the one who does everything in the earth is this fun yet mm -hmm. he becomes literally God in the earth Ooh, I hope getting this across I know this is a lot for 
for many people who haven't heard this stuff before but I hope it's making sense is it making sense yeah. if I use those words it begins to transform me into somebody different I get changed from glory to glory you understand I get transitioned from one thing to another if I get changed from one thing to another I'm not really the old thing I was before I'm in a new some right I'm in a new belief system I'm in a new worldview mm -hmm. I know sometimes those words just sound a little a lot, a little strange but it's true talking about using and speaking the sacred words I worship you Holy Ghost mm -hmm. now why would somebody speak those sacred words I worship you Holy Ghost because they've come to the point where they understand that the Holy Ghost is God he's the one Jesus sent he's the one that's in the earth he's the one doing all the things in the earth and they worship him and they walk with him that's why that person would say those things mm -hmm. do we know how we got there that's how why I began here how do we get here we're taking up where Jesus left off 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away what veil a veil is something that blinds you from seeing the truth right well if the veil is taken away I wonder what he's gonna say if this veil is taken away what is he gonna say in verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit if the veils taken away listen oh I hope this just strikes you at home the veil is taken away you begin to see and know that the Lord is the Holy Ghost he's the Spirit of the Lord he's in the earth today and you walk with him the veil is taken away when you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost it takes the veil away and the problem is most of us still have some kind of a gauzy sort of veil or we can sort of sort of semi sort of maybe see a little something blurry behind it it hasn't been completely taken away yet there is Liberty that person who knows the Holy Ghost as Lord in the earth and walks with him as the one Jesus sent as God in the earth is walking in a Liberty that other people can't verse 18 but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are what changed when we worship the Holy Ghost we're changed say when I worship the Holy Ghost, when I worship the Holy Ghost. I'm, changed. I'm changed in that room of worshiping him I worship you Holy Ghost using those words I worship you Holy Ghost you are changed can you see this from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord by the Holy Ghost you're in that room with him you're worshiping him he changes you well the transition happens from verse 16 to verse 17 nevertheless verse 16 nevertheless it shall when it shall turn to the Lord when you turn to the Lord you worship him are you here mm -hmm. I'm turning to the Lord I'm worshiping him Holy Ghost I worship you I worship you Holy Ghost and as I'm turning to him by worshiping him as God in the earth today I worship you Holy Ghost he begins to take that veil away and change me and grant me liberties nobody else could have Spirit of the Lord told me a while back he said you will go through many transformations when you're worshiping him listen when you worship him you'll go through many transformations can you testify to this mm -hmm. I can that's my testimony by worshiping the Holy Ghost I've gone through many transformations so that my worldview and my belief system is completely different than it was before yes it still it still it still contains a lot of the same backbones but it's completely different you ever read a scripture and read a scripture and read a scripture and read a scripture and meditate on a scripture and say a scripture and read a scripture and then all of a sudden it says something completely different that you never even knew because it was revealed to you welcome to the Holy Ghost you think you know something until you know the Holy Ghost and he completely flips it over on you using the words I worship you Holy Ghost that's what we're talking about using those words is a diversity of operations diversity means different operations means it does something it's gonna do something different to you 
than everything else does using the words I worship you Holy Ghost will do something different to you change you in a way that speaking in tongues can't in a way that confession can't or confessing the scriptures do I preach on speaking in tongues all the time do I preach on confessing the scriptures all the time but using the words I worship you Holy Ghost does something different it's a diversity of operations which will change you in a way that those other things can't from one glory to the next glory are you getting this what it does is it changes you say me, me into full receptivity of the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today which is where we began this message we had left that off remember people left off at a certain place and here we come but when you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost it opens you up and changes you into full receptivity of the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today that's why we use those words you understand why because if I go I worship you Holy Ghost well my mind and my body everything about me has to go well I'm worshiping God there's no way around that there's no wiggle room if I'm gonna use those words I worship you Holy Ghost I'm worshiping God yes. and I'm worshiping him as God in the earth today it opens me up and changes me into full receptivity of the person of the Holy Ghost who's the one that Jesus sent mm -hmm. that almost everybody has rejected because they want him but they don't want the one he sent but these words help you to receive him in all that he is in his full capacity in his dispensation and all his wonderfulness into your life in your situation isn't this good yes. we worship you Holy Ghost this room where if you stay there long enough he will guide you into all the truth isn't that what Jesus said mm -hmm. did Jesus say that the Holy Ghost will guide you into all the truth yeah yes what if we don't receive the Holy Ghost for who he is fully in his dispensation can he lead us into all truth no he's limited but in that room of Holy Ghost worship you're receiving him in his full dispensational authority as God in the earth today the one doing everything Jesus said he will guide you into all say all all, all the truth well he'll guide you into all the truth he is the spirit of truth he will guide you into all of himself all of himself the fullness of God the Holy Ghost so I have learned to speak these sacred words I worship you Holy Ghost and I've learned to be changed by them into receiving the Holy Ghost in a way that very few people they talk about it every once in a while but they can't go there unless they begin to worship the Holy Ghost as God I worship the living God I worship the truth I worship the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost I pray for these people I ask you to seal this message to them I ask you to introduce yourself to them that they would know you as the living God and begin to be changed and to use those words I worship you Holy Ghost that they may come up and go forth in the earth the way that you've called them to and please you we worship you Holy Ghost say this after me I worship you Holy Ghost you are God in the earth today and I worship you Holy Ghost in Jesus name Amen